Hey babes, and welcome back to Rambles and Makeup with your rambling host, Lohi Sama. Today, 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 we are going to be trying an Ella look from Fast Breath Fright, as well as talking about the movie Five Nights at Freddy's. So, grab your makeup, grab your brushes, and meet me in the bathroom. <laughs> Okay, babies, dandelions, babies. All right, I want to do a, I want to do a movie review. I do not necessarily know how long this is gonna take me, so I'm gonna start talking or whatever, and like getting my thoughts together. And if it comes to a point where like I pause too much or something. I'll just voice over and tell you about it. But let's get into it. So the movie I want to quickly tell you about, not too quickly, but the movie I want to tell you about is Five Nights at Freddy's. We are also doing a Five Nights at Freddy's. I know, usually I don't do a look the day I, you know, do the movie, but I watched the movie twice now. I really love the movie. And so here we are. We're going to talk about it. So, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's, honestly, I would say you should you should go watch it. It is worth the watch from beginning to end. I was like, who did it? And why did they do it? And like the gasp, but we're gasping. It was a whole shebang. So it starts off, it's talking about this guy, his name. It, well, no, <laughs> it starts off. Oh, heavy spoiler alerts. So if you don't want to be spoiled, then don't watch this because I'm, I'm going to say a lot. So. The movie starts off with this police officer, right? And like, or security guard rather, and he's working a night shift. He is fighting for his life to get out of this building. And I'm like, sir, get it together. So this man, he's fighting for his life and he does not get far. Let's just put it like that. And they show him basically getting strapped to this chair you hear Foxy going off in the background, right? And uh, he's strapped to this chair. Now, this chair is like, it has um, this, it's around his arms up here, all right? And both of his arms are locked in, like his wrists are locked in. And there is this mask coming down to like chew his face up. And he basically meets his demise. He can't get out of it, you know, he it is it, murder she wrote. So he he's no longer with us. He's unalived, as we like to say. So then it goes and it shows this guy named Mike. Mike is in this mall, right? He, he in his line, he trying to get it together and get his good vibes rolling for today, right? He sees this kid and he... Oh, first of all, he has this dream. And in this dream, he's sitting down, he's eating with his parents. His little brother is there, like they're having a grand old picnic, right? His mom tells him, go watch your brother. So he goes, he watches his, well, he goes to find his brother, only to see his brother is being abducted by this mysterious man. Traumatizing, right? I would have been traumatized. I probably... I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about what my mental state would have been. So now Mike, he has woken up, started a new day, making his way downtown, walking fast. Anywho, so he's talking to this lady. And first of all, let me say, in one of these scenes, this lady, she was like, can you put this and that? on like on the top and can you put like three cherries and no strawberries and five blueberries and i'm like y'all people be so demanding when it comes to like food and customer service and i know i know people have a right to say what they want and that's not what i'm saying but sometimes i feel like people be going overboard you know with their demands and their wants and i'm just like becky it is not that serious so mike 
he is next up in line and this girl she knows what he wants i guess it's like his favorite and she's like you know when are you gonna bring your sister she would really love this place mike ain't listening to jack diddly do that this lady is saying he sees this little kid gets jerked away you know how when your parents are or not maybe not your parents but when you've seen the parents so you know how you see those kids and <laughs> Their parents are impatient and they're trying to get from one point to another. And so they're maybe not always the most gentlest when it comes to like handling them. That's kind of what's going on here. Mike loses it. Okay. He thinks that this kid, I guess he's assuming that this dude, you know, is being kidnapped by this man so that causes him to go off which understanding because like he had a traumatic experience right well mike gets fired from this job obviously because you can't be out here beating up on people and i'm talking about like when mike so mike catches this man he lays into him like he is beating him for like his lunch money and dessert like he's giving him something he can feel <laughs> like truly he is going off on him and so the kid is like, dad, dad, you know, and I'm like, oh, crap, Mike. So Mike is at the unemployment office. Mike has, you know, he's going in and this guy, his name is Steve Raglan. And he's like, what, what's, what's going on, Mike? Like, you can't get it together. You beat up a man in front of his kid. And Mike's like, it's not like like I, you know, I had good intentions because he he did. <laughs> we obviously know that he had good intentions, and so uh, the guy is like, "Well, I don't really know what I can do for you. I don't really know if I can find you any type of job because, like, your track record's not commendable." He's flipping through his application, and he sees his like he says his last name, or he sees his last name, and so he goes, "Huh." And Steve has like a whole change of heart, right? First red flag, because you was just being mean to me before you knew my name, sir. So anywho, anywho, he's like, do you want some coffee? And Mike's like, forget your coffee. Nah, but so the dude is like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if we can find you really anything, Mike, but we're going to do what we can. And so... Mike's like, I understand, you know, it's hard out here in the economy. You know what I'm saying? You you just, sometimes you can only do so much, right? Right. Like Mike is very understanding. He's about to go. The guy's like, no, nah, Mike, I think we got something for you. So Mike's like, well, wicked. Why didn't you just say that at first? You know what I'm saying? You could have led with that, but you know, you want to be all hard out here and stuff. So he's like, this job all you gotta do is keep people out that's the great part about it like it's not hard you know what i'm saying pay ain't great it's a basically a crappy job but you sir look like you need a job anyway so who are you to be making demands so mike's like i can't do night sir like sorry bucko i just can't do it and the dude's like well if you have a change of heart then let me know because like nights are all you're guaranteed right now so mike goes home right he has this babysitter named max she's been taking care of uh abby his younger sister who so you know he's telling max like you know i'm gonna pay you soon there's an eviction notice on his door mike is just having a hard time trying to get it together and get it settled away well he so the scene cuts and they're at abby's school now there is this lady her name is aunt jane Aunt Jane is trying to take custody of Abby from Mike because it's just Mike and Abby. And so, you know, Mike is trying to really hold it together and not go off on this lady. And she's talking about like how Abby is mentally ill and how Mike is not a fit dad. And I'm sitting here thinking, neither are you, lady, because who goes? And like, it's so mean. <laughs> she was just a little bit too aggressive. And I'm like, don't no kid need to be with you in your moods and you're acting like that like what what kid is gonna want to you know who's gonna want to be around you lady so she is telling the the lady the counselor she's like listen lady listen linda the baby girl is fine and she's like how dare you 
She said something that cracked me up. She was like, you're the doctor here, but you're making me feel like I'm crazy. And I'm like, why are you, why are you surprised that a doctor is like, like, even if she was diagnosing you, that's her right. Like, what? So, I mean, anywho, she was saying how basically, you know, Abby didn't need to be with him. So she's like, if you don't comply with me, I'm going to take you to court. And then people are never going to let you see your sister again. Like, is that what you want? Like, for the greater good of everybody involved here, you should just um, let Abby come to me. Mike ain't having it because, but Mike is telling like the lady, the, uh, the counselor, he's like, she's right though. You know, like the caseworker or whatever you want to call it. He's like, she's right. Cause listen, ain't nobody going to side with me. Like they're going to all think that she's better off with her. Like I'm unstable. And the lady's like, look, first steps first, get a job. And she's explaining to him. <laughs> okay. Maybe that was a little bit too aggressive, but you know, like, Go find you a job. That's a good place to start. Because she's trying to explain to him, like, it does not matter what other people are saying about, like, you and Abby's relationships. Abby is drawing pictures. And, like, in almost all of her pictures, the brother is there. You know, like, Abby loves her older brother. And she's trying to get him to see any judge, any person who looks at that and sees that is going to side with you because she wants to be with you. Okay. And so Mike is like, all right, you know, now he he has to get a job, right? Because he's trying to fight for his little sister. Like he wants custody of her. And so he goes and he calls Steve back. And Steve's like, oh, is this the guy who can't do nights? Because right on, Steve, we love a little attitude. And so he's like, yeah, you know, is, is it still available? And he's like, yeah, you know, it's still available. Come on in. Come on to work. Let's get you set up. So Steve is telling him this backstory about Freddie Fazbear's. And he's telling him, you know, like the owner, he didn't want to get rid of it because he's really like nostalgic in a sense. Like, you know, he he's very uh, sentimental. There we go. Like he's holding on things because he's sentimental about them. And like he doesn't really want to let them go. Like it's kind of like his baby type of thing. And, you know, he's giving him the rundown. Like if, if something goes wrong, like trip the brakes you know, watch the cameras, the cameras will tell you everything that's going on. And so, of course, if you've played the games before, you know that, like, this is the very standard procedure of the first ever Five Nights at Freddy's. It's like, the, you know, you're the security guard working and, you know, this guy calls and he's like, hello, hello. Like, you know, and he's he's the phone guy and he's telling you about, like, the establishment and, like, the animatronics and what's going on. So that's happening in this movie, right? And so when Mike gets there, the place is open. It's lit up. It's wicked. You know, he's looking around, taking in inventory, seeing like what's here and what's there and stuff. Well, Mike goes in the room after he turns everything on, right? He proceeds to go to sleep. While he's going to sleep, he has this same dream again about his younger brother. Now, every time he dreams, it's like, the same thing over and over again happening. Hang on. Yeah. It's like the same thing over and over happening. So basically, like, Mike, um, okay, Mike, his, him, you know, they're drinking, they're, uh, they're, his dad is slathering, no, he's slathering ketchup on his burger, you know, his dad is grilling, his mom is, uh, basically telling him, you know, like, watch your brother, it's a grand old time, every time he keeps having the same dream, so Mike is having his dream again, and this time, like, while he's having a dream, he turns around, and he sees these children behind him, and he's like, what, because that ain't ever happened before, when Mike is jolted up out of the, so no, no, no. So he see, has this dream, right? And he sees these kids and he's like, do you know, like who took my brother? Like, do you know? And he's asking him. And of course these kids are not having Mike at all. And so they take off running from him and he's trying to chase him down. Cause you know, he wants answers. He falls over this rock and he wakes up, right? When he wakes up, it's raining there's this security guard at the door. She's buzzing the door or whatever. And so, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that's his first time. He wakes up. And so after that, he goes and he, like, turns the breaker on. And, um, you know, like, he's back up. He's back up. He's back in, like, the land of the living or whatever. And so he gets home and she's like, Max is like, well, how's the job? He's like, it's interesting, but, you know, it's a job. A job's a job. Hoop, hop, whatever. Abby, she draws these pictures, right? So, like, she draws these pictures and Mike thinks she just has an imagination. Like, she's just creating imaginary friends, you know, stuff that kids do when they're kids. And so, she wants to go to work with him and Mike is not having it. Abby ain't having him telling her that she can't go to work with him. So, they end up kind of squabbling a little bit. He gets his way, but she's just, she ain't having it. And so, like, in her room... You know, she has pictures of these characters and, you know, these figurines and like she doesn't, <laughs> there's one part where Abby doesn't want to eat and Mike is like, you know, if, whatever, if you don't eat. Well, no, he went and sat on the bed trying to talk to her and she's like, you're sitting on my friend. And he's like, you know what, whatever, like if you don't eat, you're never going to grow up and be able to ride the adult rides. And she makes a remark and she goes, my friend says you're an idiot. And he's like, okay, whatever, but at least I'm real. And I'm like, well, that's why they don't like you, Mike. So he goes back to work, right? Second night. Takes his sleeping pills, you know, the whole shebang. And like, so when he's at home, he will play this nature tape, lay on his back, look at this post of Nebraska, like the trees or whatever, and take these pills because it helps like stimulate that night that happens and so he keeps having this dream on loop willingly because he's read this book that's this some kind of theory like you remember everything that happened to you and like the choosing what you depend to focus on like you can bring back those things to mind so he is still actively like trying to find who it is that took his brother right so he goes to work and he's going back to sleep again and it loops again and he sees the kids and he's like, okay, listen, my brother, do you know what happened? Like, please don't run away. They make a beeline for it. He chases one of them. And when he catches up to him, he tries to grab a hold onto him. This kid has a hook on him. And so he cuts Mike. So Mike like is jolted awake the power is off he goes to like turn the power on again we see foxy in the corner like looking at this man and i'm like no so vanessa's there right he goes opens up the door there's this guard there her name is vanessa so vanessa's like what's happening what happened to your arm like she is immediately nosy so she helps him get bandaged up and stuff and she's like all right mike what's really going on here because you're in fidgety you're twitching like you look shady as hell like why are you here type thing and so he's telling her like basically the night there is weird it's a weird experience it's a weird night he don't really know how to chalk up what he's going through so vanessa shows him around this place right and she shows him like where they go like well, how they are on stage because at one point he had flashed his lights on to look at bunny and he jumped back when he realized like okay it's this big animatronic in my face right so she's like you're gonna quit your job and he's like come again so she tells him like you're gonna quit your job because you know the reasons that she give him or whatever and so she's like, let me show you this place. It's magical. So all this is happening. She's showing him the place, you know, the whole shebang. Like they are lighting up, they're dancing, they're grooving, partying. You know what I'm saying? Like Freddie is owning it on the mic, you know? And so she's like, you want to dance? Everything cuts off. <laughs> Everything goes completely black. There's no magic. There's no love here anymore. There is nada for Mike. So, like, Vanessa stays with him through the night, and basically when they leave, she's like, look, just do your job and go home. Like, that's the best remedy for anybody right now. He goes home. So, then it cuts out to freaking Jane, the Aunt Jane, Jeff, and Max, the babysitter Max, and Jane's lawyer, Doug. Doug is an 
he is one of my favorite characters too. Like the faces he makes, man, like that man, he he was a good actor in this. So Jane is sitting with them and they're like, we couldn't find nothing on them. So Jane is giving them the blues clues about like not finding Jack Diddley do on Mike. And so she's like, you want to tell me how come like you're basically like these gray royal screw ups and just like screw you lady. Don't bring those bad vibes over here because you're not getting what you want. Like my sister did her job and like you did not pay us the money you owe us, which I know. I know that this movie is set back, you know, to happen back in the 80s. So they were basically trying to sabotage Mike for $200. And I don't know if it's just because I am in this economy right now, but I'm like, you did all that for $200. <laughs> I cannot. But <laughs> and so Max is like, he sleeps a lot, you know? And like, she had been giving him a play by play. And I was like, you're lying, Max. Cause you really was out here betraying Mike. And like, you're a horrible person. So anyways, they're trying to figure out what they can do, right? And just like, why don't we just kill him? Because right on. And the liar's like, I really should not be here. I cannot literally hear anything you're saying. And Jane's like, sit down, Doug, and shut it up. So Doug has to sit down and shut it up because that's what she said do. So she's like, it would be tempting to kill him, but like, we can't do that. We, we need to do something else. We need to get my niece. So after talking for a while, they decide they're going to trash the place, right? Trash it, make it look horrible. So that way, Mike looks like a bad employee. He gets fired from this job, and then he loses custody of, you know, his baby sister. So Jane really only wants her so that she could get money from the state, and Mike knows this. And so Jane is like, if y'all do this and get this done right, I will pay y'all a thousand dollars which once again you out here doing all this for a thousand dollars i just i'm sorry i'm sorry i know that was probably like a lot a lot a lot of money back then but now times are hard okay you know a thousand dollars to create mischief that is all of their bail money should they get caught so any who's uh they put this plan together to go and trash the place while Mike is gone, they'll trash the place, make him look horrible, get him out of there, get the kid and get the moolah, you know, in that order or however it falls. Mike goes home. No, he goes. Yeah. So this is how this has happened before the second shift. Right. So while all this is going on, Mike, let's jump over to another scene. Mike is confronted by Vanessa at his house. She doesn't even know that he has a baby sister, but she rolls up on him. She's like, Mike, what are these? And shows him the pills. And we're like, no, you didn't, boo. But so Mike is like, it's not what you think. I can explain. Like, these are sleeping pills. And she gets smart. And she's like, it's on the bottle what it is. Like, I don't need you explaining this to me. I need you explaining to me why you got it. Because when I sign them papers, like Usher say, you're going to get in a lot of trouble because you have these pills on you and I'm trying to save your life here. So Mike has to tell her like the harsh truth about what's going on. So he asks her to take a walk and like while they're taking a walk and stuff, he tells her, you know, about his brother and about what happens and about why he takes the sleeping pills. And we all get that established, right? Okay. This would have been the next day. Yeah. Cause Mike, would have been at home like while it was happening. So that's why Vanessa confronted him because she's like, the place was trashed, all right? And if you did it, if you didn't do it, the blood is still on your hands because like you were supposed to, like you had one job. Keep the blade safe. Mike's like, I know I get it. Like this is what happened. So they get that established. Why it happened, what happened, and it shouldn't happen again, right? <laughs> so Mike is getting ready, you know, for another shift. Well, this time he has to take his baby sister with him because homegirl Max ain't picking up the phone because there is a cut scene and we go back. So we go and see what happens when they were trashing the place. So Max was outside waiting for her brother and them as they go in and trash this place. Mm, mm, mm. The animatronics are up. 
and they are moving and cruising and they are watching these people like destroy their home you know like all they've ever known about they're watching them destroy this so they start getting bodied i'm not gonna say how just know that the animatronics was not having any of them and any of their bad vibes so they get bodied right Woo! max goes in there so Max had been waiting in the car for her brother and them, right? Her brother and his friends to do what it do. They ain't coming out. So she's like, two plus two is 35 right now. Where are my sibling? Where is my sibling and his friends? She goes to find them. She sees Freddie. She sees Freddie and she sees this kid within Freddie. So for whatever reason, in her mind, she is supposed to go up to this animatronic. And she does it. Now... This is a jokey joke, so please don't get offended. But she had to be a white lady that did this, all right? Because ain't no black person that I know going to look at something and be like, I think it's a kid in this big giant bear. I'm going to go and touch it and like. So she gets on his chair. She looks in. The kid grabs her. Murder she wrote. Because, y'all, when I saw the scene, I was like, oh, I could not believe they went there. They went there. I'm going to just let you see for yourself how it ended for her. Because I was like, Hoo -hoo! that was some smoke. So she meets her maker, obviously, right? She is no longer, she is unalive, right? So because of this, Mike can't get in touch with his babysitter. And because of that, he has to take abs with him to work now. You see? You see what's happening? So he takes her to work. She builds a fort. And he, she, while he's working, she's sleeping in a fort, right? Supposed to be. Well, he ends up waking up to her. Like, he sees the kids. And the kids are like, he's chasing one of them down again. He's like, I just want answers. Like, I just want to know what's going on. And the kid is like, if we give you answers, if we tell you what it is you want to know, what you going to give us? And Mike, like any normal human, is like, I'm going to give you whatever you want. Just like, name your price and it's yours, right? Mm, mm, mm. So he wakes up to the sound of what he presumes is Abby screaming in pain. But she's really screaming because they're tickling her to death. Which I can't blame, baby girl, because I sound like that when I'm getting tickled. So you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but so, um, Freddie, let me just say, Mike is about to like defend his sister, right? Like, he is about to save her life. Freddie charges up on this mug and Freddie is about to give him the works, give him something he can feel like. Y'all, Freddie was about that action. <laughs> Freddie was not having Mike. And it wasn't until the sister was like, that's my brother that Freddie, you know, backed off. Because he was about to, he was about to end that man's life. Because <laughs> he interrupted his tickle time. So, hey, don't be going out here interrupting people tickle times because you never know what's going to happen. So, um, Abby's like, these are my friends. Mike is like, no, they're not. We're going home. You know, she's saying bye. She's drawing them pictures and she's like, they really love pictures. Now, one thing that was on the wall that I did not mention is in the pizzeria or fast bears, there is a place where, um, they're like, they have a wall full of like, art and stuff with the kids in this yellow bunny like there's a whole collage of stuff going on right on this wall so she draws them a heart and she leaves right she's like goodbye so mike asks her like about what's going on right the next day she drew a scene of their brother being taken and Mike's like, I know we don't talk about it much. Like, it was hard for our parents. It was hard for me. So, the mom died. And the dad could not cope. So, because I want to be sensitive of it, I'm going to just say he is unalive. You're going to have to watch if you want to. But it's a very sad story. 
And so uh, it's just, you know, Mike and his sister. And so he's asking her, like, do they ever talk about this? Like, do they ever say anything? And she's like, no, not really. They only talk about the yellow bunny. But, you know, I'll ask for you if that's what you want. He's like, yes, please. Wicked, right? She's going to ask. She's going to find out, like, what is going on. Peaches and greens, my friends. They go back the next night. Vanessa is like, oh, Abby, when she sees Abby there, because she obviously doesn't want Abby there. But so they want to build a fort. Ooh, that scared me. So they want to build a fort, right? Abby wants to build a fort. Mike's like, no. Do you see how big these animatronics are? I will not. Vanessa's like, you brought her here, so you will, Mike. <laughs> so they built this big fort, and they're all laying under it, right? It's a very kumbaya moment. So in the midst of them building the fort and stuff, it just don't really, it just don't really pan out how we think it's going to pan out. And so Vanessa's like, listen, if you bring Abby back here, I will end you myself. You're not going to have a life anymore, bucko. So Mike and all of us are like, because <sighs> she was just not having it. And Abby's like, she's really mad, you know? And he's like, yeah, I see that. But so, Jane, she, this lady, she, you know, is like keeping her head in still. And Mike really has to sit down and think about if he's going to, you know, keep trying to keep his little sister or what. Because you got to realize, like, it's hard for him to pay bills. You know, he got an eviction notice. He's trying to be the best brother ever, but like... He still can't get over what's happened to his brother. Like, he is spiraling, essentially. And he knows, in a sense, that he's taking Abby with him. And I'm pretty sure, you know, he feels guilty about the fact that, like, he is trying to get it together for him and his sister. But the getting it is not together for him and his sister. And so, the aunt comes over. And she's, like, going to babysit you know, Abby while he goes to work. And so Mike, you know, he's making all of it. You know how you, have you ever made like a, an apology meal for somebody or like a bribery meal? You know, they favorite meal. So you slap some pancakes on the stove, you know, you flipping those flapjacks, you know what I'm saying? Like you get the whole meal ready and everything. Like you present it all nice and you're like, dinner is ready or, you know, breakfast ready. That's essentially what Mike did. Abby is ecstatic about her breakfast until she sees who's having breakfast with him and then she doesn't want it anymore because can you blame her? She is beside herself with grief because she's already asked Mike like, are you going to give me away? And he's like, no. Well, here goes the aunt and she doesn't understand what's happening. In her mind, he's giving her away like it is set in stone. So Mike's like, it is not what you think, you know, and like he can't really deal with this. So he goes back to work. Well, I'm pausing here. I'm pausing here because I got to go do some things and then I'll come back and try to wrap it up. So that was part one. So this has been part one of Five Nights at Freddy's. Give me a second. You, if you follow the edits and stuff, you will see. But give, give me a moment. I know. I know. We're seeing things. We're seeing hair down. Part two. Part two. If you want to see what happened, you got you got to go and check out my edits because it'll make so much more sense than this. Okay. Getting back into it very quickly. Um, so Vanessa's like, if you bring this kid back here, I will shoot you. You know, she's had it with Mike and like with Mike trying to be a father figure. You know, she's just, she's not, she's not having him right now. I need to. Okay. Okay. And so. Sorry, guys. I'm really spaced out. Uh, Mike goes back to work, right? And so the kids are like, he he's in his vision again. He's seeing everything that's happening once again. And the kids are like, um, if we tell you what happened that day, what will you give us? And of course, Mike is like, whatever you want sorry there's a song he's like whatever you want i'll give it to you and um they're like wicked okay that's what they want to hear because you know they want abby and so 
Okay, so hopefully I can talk this out while I'm painting. I know it's a thing. But so basically they, you know, Mike wakes up. No, he meets them again in this dream world, right? And he's seeing his brother in them. And he's like, this is wrong. Like, this is very wrong. This is different. And this, there's this main kid with blonde hair and blue eyes. And he's like, this can be a reality. This can all be yours. We can make this to where this is what you see every single night. Like, you'll never have to wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can be a family again. All we want is Abby. Mike is obviously not thinking, right? Because he's like, yes, 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 a million times. Yes, yes, yes. Like, this is something he's wanted his whole life now. His brother, his family being happy, like being whole, you know, being in one piece. Well, when he reaches out to touch his brother, When he reaches out to touch his brother, his sister is like, I love you, Mike, or something like that. You know, it shows his sister. So Mike is realizing like, no, this is not what I want. Like, this is too much, but it's too late. Like the kids are gone. He's stranded. He's left here by himself. So it pans back to the pizzeria where Abby is, right? Now, Abby has ran away. Well, no, 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 no. Take it back. Abby was at home with the grandma aunt aunt was sitting down on a chair and who comes in freddie comes in she meets her maker and like honestly you know what as though it wasn't as satisfying as i wanted it to be i was still happy to hear aunt jane is taking a little nap right now Yo, sleep forever aunt jane sleep forever lady because you're not right so they take her. He's like, do you want to play like the other people are waiting for us? And this time when Freddie sees her, it's the kid, like the, the bears behind him, obviously, but it's the kid. Right. And so um, he takes her back to the pizzeria and like Mike is getting the business. Mike. They poor Mike. He just. Mm mm. He's in his chair. He gets out. He gets free. He hears Abby screaming the whole shebang. And so um, at one point in time, Vanessa, he's talking to Vanessa. He's like, you knew about this, right? Like you literally knew all of this. And Vanessa, she's trying to apologize. You know, like she's helped him and she's like, I'm so sorry, you know, like for what I've done and what has happened. Also, I know it is very possible that like I've skipped some things. I'm doing this on purpose so that way you can go and watch and see the things that I've skipped and be like, oh, so two plus two is not 38. It is four. I'm just skipping all over. I'm trying to give you, give it to you. So uh, he hears his sis screaming, right? And he's talking to Victoria. Victoria's like, listen, he's already here. Like, you're not going to escape him he wants you basically you know and she's like that's my dad he's a horrible person he was a horrible person when I was a kid and I'm just like you know what Vanessa he is a horrible person like I feel so bad for her that she has to live this over and over again because her father wanted to make this bad choice and be like this bad man you know because he could not be a decent human being so she had to suffer at his hands not only as a kid at home, but it sounds like, you know, like she suffered like trying to keep the place open and like with the history and seeing all these kids getting done wrong. And like to think, man, like not only is your dad out here being a murderous villain, but he's also just being a horrible father. Like there is no redeeming points for this man whatsoever. So any who's uh this baby child she's like telling mike i'm not gonna be no help really like i'm not gonna be no help for you and so mike goes he gets a sister so like these kids they are playing with abby and they're like it's time abby because you know they want her to be one of them an animatronic 
So they take her and they're about to stuff her in the lady that I'm doing today, Ella. Abby's not having it. Abby's like, I don't know what you've been told, but this is not the life for me. Like, I choose to live. <laughs> like, I want my life. I don't want this. This is hurting me, you know. And, like, they're trying to put her in there because these kids, keep in mind, they don't know right from wrong. You know, like, this is the only life they've ever known. So, in their mind, this is justified. Like, this is the only way. So, Mike saves Abby or whatever, and they're trying to get out of there. In comes spring trap, and I'm like, you're lying. And so he basically reveals who he is. Steve Raglan is the one who took his brother, and he's like, what well, you know, like what a twist of fate. I killed your brother, now I get to kill you. Like it's gonna be a fun old time, you know. And so Vanessa's like, please don't do this. You know, like she gets it together, she comes around, puts on her big girl panties. Like, we are very proud of her, because listen. Y'all, trauma is one thing, but then to stand up to your parent and be like, you're horrible after he's abused you like mentally, emotionally for so many years, like to put your foot down. I'm like, so her dad's like, listen, cause Mike, he done got Molly Wap. Like Mike done got beat up, beat up. Like there's just no way to say that in a nice way. Mike is out here fighting for his life quite literally and so Vanessa's like please don't do this you know and uh he's like you may have forgotten your loyalties but you know these animatronics have it. and like while Vanessa and her dad is going back and forth the animatronics is just peeking and looking and you know they like twitching out and trying to figure out what the heck is about to happen because once again all they know is the yellow bunny William Afton you know Steve Wrangler so there comes a point where Abby looks at the board and she's like, mm hmm, okay, two plus two is like 75, but I'm, I'm on the right track to justice. She draws this new picture and she's going to like put up this new picture because if she can change the narrative of him and the, the like the, because the biggest kid, the biggest picture is him with the kids, the bunny man with the kids all holding hands. And so she wants to change the narrative and tell them like what really happened to them because she knows the truth, you know. So anywho, Vanessa's like, I'm not going to let you hurt her because he starts trying to go after the kid. He stabs Vanessa and I am like, this is a betrayal. This this takes over any like anime betrayal I've ever seen. There is just... The type of hurt that I felt watching that, and I don't know if it's because, like, I'm very family-oriented. I love my babes, you know. I love my parents. If my dad ever stabbed me, I, I would just be like, Lord, take me to heaven, like, right now, immediately. Because I would not know how to process or cope with, like, that amount of trauma. And so she falls over. I'm looking, I, my jaw is not even on the floor. My jaw is like in the earth's core. Like it was just such a dramatic scene. Anywho, baby girl, she rips down the old picture, puts up the new picture. And he's like, what, what's going on? And so she's like, now they see you for who you really are. And like the kids start remembering how they actually died and like what he actually did to them, right? All right, babes. I know it's been a wild episode. I've been all over the place. I, I promise if you <laughs> go look at the edits, it's all going to make sense. It's all going to make sense. So I can do this while I'm talking because literally it's the last little touch. But so coming to this big shebang of an ending, right? So the way that it ends is basically she puts the picture on there. They see him for what he actually is. Like he was the bad guy all along. He was not good. Like it wasn't this big happy family that like they thought it to be. It was sinister, you know, like. And even in the midst of this, he's like, I made you. Look at how weak and small you are. Like, you're so pathetic. And I'm like, this is not the right time <laughs> for you to be sitting here trying to read people their rights. Like, you are in trouble. You are out, man. You have no friends. What are you doing you're sitting here like you got friends? So <laughs> he ends up basically like he was talking to them or whatever and like dissing them and like, when he moves his suit 
glitches. Like he gets his helmet. No, 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 no. He didn't get the helmet at first. His suit glitches and it like the spring traps are faulty, right? And like they dig into his skin. And y'all, I was like, oh, cause actually like hearing about it on a video game and seeing it in real, and like it's just such a different experience. And so he starts writhing in pain cause like this suit is squeezing in on his intestines and like clamping down on him, right? Like he is in pain, like he is dying. And these animatronics are just sitting over him, not caring, even a cupcake is like goodbye. Like nobody cares that this man is struggling cause why should they? Like he killed them, he took from them, you know, like he lied to them, making them think like they were a family and da 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 da. And so what I believe, this is just my theory, like playing the games, cause I like, you know, I've played, I have played some of the games. I've watched other people play the games, the whole thing. What I think happens is like these kids, you know, they are kids and like they do possess these animatronics, but some kind of way, whenever they're like getting ready to go for the kill, like their brain switches off, you know, and like, they're being controlled to kill these kids and it could just be that they think that the killing is okay because they don't know you know any better but the only reason i say that is because i was watching a gameplay and baby she was like i don't know what happened you know she was talking about how there was this little girl there and she didn't know what happened she just heard the screams so that's why i think it's like some kind of manipulation with their mind where like they're shut off and like they are just these killers and then they go back to being a church i don't know i don't know i had haven't gotten too deep in the lore like read the books and stuff like that which i need i need to get on that but y'all know me from my manga we just need to get better at reading so anywho, this man he's on the ground right he is like dying so mike and abby they're getting out and they're getting vanessa they're all getting out like getting to safety y'all one of the most beautiful scenes i've ever seen in a movie i wanted to cry i was so proud to see this scene like it's made me watch the movie again it is just okay so okay okay let me tell you because i'm geeking out there's a part where he's on the floor right and he puts his mask on and he's like i'll always return or like i always come back and i'm like yes you do sadly enough but so when he puts this mask on Foxy has hooked him and like is dragging him away and as he's dragging him away he is just like glitching out like spring trap is glitching and y'all I was just so happy because it looks like a live version of the game like how he was glitching out in the game and like you know like jerking and spazzing he's doing that in this animatronic suit in the movie and I I don't know like it was just so cool to see how something animated had become real you know and like he actually did it like in the game i don't know it was just beautiful it was beautiful i felt like that was my favorite scene of the whole movie purely because like i've watched repeatedly how he's gotten like caught in that spring trap suit and you know like it is basically the final countdown for him anywho's 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 he glitches out right and they're dragging him back and like there's a part where he's in the room and like he's lifting up his hands and like he's just jerking and the kid is like goodbye i don't know what you're jerking for like later oh and so then there's a part where Corey kitchen is in there he's the taxi driver and like I, i've expressed this before how many a times but i am a fan i love him so so much like Corey is just a treasure that should be protected at all costs but he has this part in there and like He's driving the taxi and he's like, you will have to go and see it for yourself. It's on his channel. Like, I don't want to spoil it or take away from him, but he's in there. I know Ryan and went to go see the set and like, they also had pictures. Matt Pat was in there. He was like in the restaurant. And even that was cool because I watch his theory videos and I have in the past. And so honestly, you guys like... I am such a big nerd. Like all these people who made appearances in here, Steve, I knew him because he played in Scooby-Doo. So like, it is just honestly, truly, it was such a, like, I didn't even star in this movie. These people will probably never see this, like never see me, but to, for me, 
to honestly see all of their dreams come to life in this movie like this movie just feels so special you know because scott i know he has such a hard time like trying to actively get people to believe in freddy's and like to make the games and then like the delays with the later games and then like the delays with the movies and like people having so much to say but like despite all of that he kept going and like to just see the cast that he put in there and to just see like i said Corey and like knowing how hard all these people have worked to like reach their dreams it truly inspired me and it encouraged me man like you know, truly, like I always tell you guys, you know, and this does tie perfectly into my ending, but you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to. You are so talented. You are so gifted. And even though like people may not always see it right then and there and even though it may seem like the odds are stacked against you, like that should not be a reason for you to not keep going. Please keep going. Please chase your dreams. Like believe in yourself because at the end of the day, you are your biggest cheerleader. And if you don't believe in you and like you don't have confidence in you, nobody else is going to see how great you are. You know, my motto is pray to God, ask him to, you know, guide your hands and to help you along this journey. Because if he gave a promise to you and if he he started a great work in you like he is faithful to finish it so please hold on and please have hope like things don't happen overnight and it can be very like <laughs> mm, tedious maybe while you're waiting and being patient and like doing your best to be patient but no like it's gonna happen it's gonna be for you what's for you is for you like that is final that is set in stone and that is done for so yes please just be encouraged to chase your dream and to live your truth despite what the obstacles are that seem to be stacked against you but this is my ella look i'm gonna do more edits to it so as always if you want to check them out you can find it on my tiktok at dohi summer or at my instagram at dohi summer i post the pictures and the videos happy thanksgiving to everybody who is viewing this if you view this before thanksgiving and if afterwards i guess happy early or late thanksgiving depending on when you watch it but as always thank you guys so much for hanging out with me any type of looks that you would like to see me try you can drop a comment below anything you would like me to read or watch manga anime videos whatever let me know i promise to do my best to get to it my best friend is still <laughs> waiting for a review of an anime and i have neglected to give it to her so i really need to get on the ball but that aside blooper time <laughs> It just may get put in this video. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. But as always, gang, truly just in a, anything you want to see me try my hand at, let me know. And like I say, once again, like I'm being so serious from the bottom of my heart. Believe in yourself. Chase your dreams. And as long as you put God first, don't be afraid of the outcome. You know, believe you, you got this. You can do it. Please, if you enjoyed this episode, kiss me with the like. Please come and subscribe. Hit the bells for notifications when I post. But yes, babes, thank you so much for all your time and your energy and your efforts with me. I know this one was kind of like all over the place and like it may have seemed rushed, but I was really excited when I saw the movie. I wasn't even going to talk about this movie, but I was like, ooh, 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 I want to talk about this movie. So, yes. I give it like a hundred out of ten. Honestly, I I can't say anything bad about it. And like I say, I don't know if I'm just extremely biased because I seen the games and I know the stories and I know everything about it. But it was also too a good movie to me. Now you know I've come down on some people from my favorites. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna say. But please go check it out for yourself. If you've watched it, if you're gonna watch it, let me know who's your favorite character. Funnily enough, I said this on my podcast, if you watch, if not, really quickly, I say on my podcast, like, I was very afraid of, like, Freddie and Bunny and Chica them when I was, like, going out of high school into college. Fears of animatronic. It's a thing. You check it out there. But it's so funny to say, like, after seeing the movie and after seeing everything, I honestly think, like, Bunny and Freddie are two of my favorites. I, I don't know. Like, the Chica... I like Chica, okay? I don't know if it's the bib or the cupcakes that's just like, ooh, Chica. Like, she's still very scary. But Freddie, I love Freddie. Like, 
bunny. The, I think it was the way too that they had them twitching. I was biased for that because the way they were moving around. So like I say, Freddie was about to give homeboy the business. And I was like, right on, take him out. But thank you, babes, so much for enjoying, for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy, but thank you for watching. Um, and until next time, man, please always remember that the Lord does love and bless you. May he keep you. I love you, and I hope wherever you are and whenever you're viewing this, you have an incredible day or an amazing night. Goodbye, guys. Hey.